Hey everyone, welcome to Sketch Day. I'm Spencer and today I'm going to be going over a simple demo using a simple tool, Ballpoint Pen. And it's brand new, just out of the box. So pretty much sticking to the same principle we used last week, light till we get it right, with a twist at the end. As you can see, I've got a cordless drill here. <clears throat> um, and no, we're not going to use this on the paper. I'm just going to use it as reference for proportion. So we are sketching a little cordless drill, screwdriver type product here today. So feel free to use the links below to purchase any materials you don't have. But if you do have a ballpoint pen or a light marker, that will work as well. Um, so feel free to get started. I'm just using simple printer paper today. So really cheap stuff. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Now I haven't actually drawn one of these before. <laughs> well, I mean, not recently anyways. As you guys recall, I'm just kind of getting back into this. So I've got here my cordless drill just as a visual reference for proportions. So you may see me use my magic finger calipers here just to kind of measure and get a sense of, of distance as we go through. But other than that, I'm just going to create my own design. <clears throat> so the first thing I'm going to do is, as you can see, I've kind of rotated my paper here. And depending on how big you want to sketch this, I was thinking, you know, maybe since it's kind of a tall top to bottom product, I would. Uh, sketch vertically. So if this happens to jump out of frame. My for, uh, my apologies rather. So first things first, since this is a new ballpoint pen, I'm actually going to kind of warm up the pen, just draw a few lines on some scrap paper. Again, drawing with my shoulder, follow through, nice clean lines. And to start, really I can just pick whatever point of view I want, right? So perspective wise I'm just going to start by drawing kind of a box that represents the volume of the body of the drill just nice and light okay like so draw through okay so there we've got the main body of the drill. Now looking at my drill here, you can see that there's the main body, a little bit of mass here for the trigger and then the handle. So for the portion for the trigger, I'm just gonna block out with a little bit of a wireframe, some mass just below, nice and light, okay? So there we've got our two masses and attached to this mass on the bottom, again, drawing through all my lines nice and light. I'm going to then kind of kind of take a look at this. You know, we've got a trigger up front where we would hold it. So I'm just gonna map, map out at an angle, slight angle, kind of a general shape here for my mass. And by mass, I mean the meat of the body as I'm drawing this. Okay, and I wanna be careful that all my lines going back seem to converge at the same vanishing point. So the perspective is going to get a little bit extreme toward the bottom of the sketch, but that's okay. Okay, and then we've got kind of where the battery goes. Okay, and I just want to kind of get the perspective down here. All right, so something like this, just for the mass. Okay, so now that we have our mass in, and I've purposely drawn the body in a squarish proportion because toward the front here, I want to have kind of a cylindrical body. Okay, so I've divided this square into four equal parts. You could do eight if you wanted to double check the proportion. And then I'm just going to project back to the back of my sketch and sketch a portion of this rear ellipse and connect to the front, okay, just like so. Now, as far as transitions go, right, along the body you've got, or I have rather, kind of my main plastics area. And since this is a, a different brand of drill, I'm gonna modify the design just a little bit. So instead of a, a circle going all the way down, I've got kind of this, this squarish form. Now again, the advantage to working light is once I add my contrasting lines, a lot of this will kind of fade away, okay? 
And let's just add a couple little cutouts here. And maybe this is a, a button on the top for indicating which direction you want to drill in. Okay, so if you want to, for example, put a screw in, maybe the switch is on one side versus the other side. And let's have some venting on the back here for our motor. We can refine this as we go. Okay, so no, uh, no big deal here if you're working on your design and you think, oh, I want to change this or that because we are working kind of light. So for the transitions, I'm just, as you can see toward the back here, starting to add a little bit of a transition or fill it in. And for my trigger, again, leaning on this volume that I sketched in, I can start to just add a few curved lines like so. Maybe a little area for where the trigger is. Now for the handle itself, right, I kind of want to have a little bit of a curve. So I'm going to sketch in just kind of like the center lines, right? And you can imagine that this thing has somewhat of a cross section to it. Okay, and that we're going to represent in our rendering. But for now, I'm just using the guidelines that I created for my perspective to then inform and influence my drawing. Okay. And let's get just a general rough outline of our battery pack here. And toward the front, I'm just going to offset my lips like so, and have another couple of ellipses for where my bit would go into the tool. And as you can see, this line, right, is the center line of these ellipses going back in perspective. Okay, so like I mentioned before, we are working light until we get it right. And with a ballpoint pen, one of the cool things I can do is I can just increase the pressure that I'm putting on the pen and I can get a thicker line drawn in, okay? And that's handy because, you know, if, if you're traveling or if you're like me and just like to, to pack light, a ballpoint pen is a great tool that has a lot of versatility as you sketch, okay? Now the rest of this we will fill out in part two of the video where I'm actually gonna take this sketch, capture it in Procreate, and then render it so you guys can see how I would add a little bit of color. But for this sketch, I wanted to focus on perspective, line weight, and uh, general placement on the page as we go. Again, working light till you get it right. So if you're just starting out and you don't have any kind of digital sketching tool, that's okay because with a simple pen, you can still communicate that idea that you wanna communicate. Pretty handy. All right, and we've got our trigger here, and hopefully you start to get the gist of what I'm doing. Okay, I'm just adding line weight where appropriate, sometimes even a little bit of shadow, just to help my, my form read as I'm sketching this out. So just add <clears throat> emphasis wherever you feel you kind of need that in your individual drawing. And 
I'm just going to sketch in just a little bit of a grip here. Well, maybe this is some other label area or branding or sticker. It really just depends on the functional need of what you're doing. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so for the grip, I can pretty much put whatever design I want in. So if I want a little kind of rubber pad on the back, maybe just a shape like that. And on the front, I kind of mimic that. Okay, and maybe those are my two rubber grip sections. Okay, something maybe a little stylized like so. And for the battery portion, again, the perspective getting kind of extreme toward the bottom of the drawing because of the height of the product. And truly, as, as the uh, visionary <laughs> designer that you might be um, illustrating the stuff, you can decide what point of view and what perspective you want to use as you sketch your product. So pretty neat um, that you do have that, that level of, of control, if you will, over your drawing. Just depends on what you want to show and how you want to show it. So I'm just going to shade these little grip sections in just a little bit. You know, if I, if I were doing this in pen and I just wanted to show a different material, I may shade in this area like so, for example, and you know, maybe this section that's cut out as well. I could shade that in. Just keeping the whole thing somewhat loose and not too rigid as I go. As a general rule, most of my sketches tend to be fairly loose. One, because it saves time. And two, um, if I'm gonna get super tight with something, then I typically just go into a 3D CAD program, model that thing and use that um, as part of my quote unquote sketch. So it's a lot easier for me to just keep it loose. And if I'm gonna get really tight, really defined, um, do that with the help of a computer. Now I can do that with, with my hands, but it does take you know, a few hours to, for me anyways, to get a, a decent drawing just using my hands. So, and certainly several overlays and a few tries to get it right. So this wraps up part one of the video. We have our design, we have our sketch. I may tweak a few little things as we move into the digital portion, but hopefully, as you can see, just building out the volumes of the product, looking at proportion, um, essentially looking at the form, dividing that form into its functional bits and then beautifying it, we can come up with a sketch of a concept. And one of the tips I always give my students or anyone I teach really is to draw from observation. And then that way you can start to draw from imagination. So if you don't have anything in your head, if you've never looked at a drill, if you've never sketched one, it's gonna be hard to just pull one out and, and sketch it. You know, it may look familiar, but it might look a little bit off. So it's, it's okay and always fine to draw from observation before you get into drawing from imagination. Well, thanks for joining me for this part one of uh, this video, sketching and rendering a drill. You can find part two coming shortly after I post this one. And as always, you can find me on social media at sketchaday.com on Instagram or facebook.com slash sketchaday. And be sure to check out my latest Endeavor project, phasezero.co. And there you'll find my digital sketchbook, 
of 500 sketches that's available for purchase and a few other t-shirt designs that I've been working on as part of my ongoing art project. And coming soon, my Procreate brushes, I will package and, and post there as well. So anything that I create will be available there on that site. Well, thanks again, and we'll see you next time right here on Sketch Day.